Good morning and welcome to this online service of morning prayer for Thursday 6th of July 2023. This service is part of the online prayer ministry of Christ Church Cathedral Newcastle and I'm the Dean of Newcastle, Catherine Bowyer. I acknowledge that Christ Church Cathedral and the Deanery where I'm recording this service stand on the unceded sovereign lands of the Awabakal and Waramai peoples and St Peter's Hamilton stands on the unceded sovereign lands of the Awabakal peoples. I pay my respects to Elders past and present to any First Nations peoples joining in this service today. This week is NAIDOC week and we are committed to listening to the wisdom of our Elders. As a diocese and as a parish and personally I'm committed to Makarata reconciliation, to playing my part in repenting of sins of past and present in walking humbly upon this sacred land and seeking always that all may care for the good gifts God has entrusted to us in creation. Today the Church remembers Thomas More and John Fisher, Reformation martyrs. Born in London in 1478, Thomas More studied classics and then the law, being called to the bar at 23 years old. His clear honesty and integrity impressed Henry VIII, and he appointed Thomas as his Chancellor. He supported the King in his efforts to reform the clergy, but disagreed over Henry's disputes with the papacy caused by the King's desire to annul his marriage to Catherine of Aragon and to find another Queen who might provide him with a male heir. Henry could stand no such act of defiance and imprisoned his Chancellor in the hope that he would renege. Thomas refused to take the oath on the Act of Succession, which declared the King to be the only protector and supreme head of the Church of England, and was executed for treason on this day in 1535, declaring that he died the King's good servant, but God's first. John Fisher was Thomas More's close friend and ally. A brilliant academic, he had substantially reformed the life of the University of Cambridge through the wealth and influence of his patron, Lady Margaret Beaufort, the mother of Henry VII. He was made Bishop of Rochester and proved himself to be a good pastor to his small diocese. As with Thomas, Henry VIII much admired him at first, but when he opposed the king, their relationship deteriorated. Aged 66 and in indifferent health, he nevertheless endured the trauma of imprisonment in the Tower of London. He was executed just two weeks before Thomas on the 22nd of July. 1535. Surely that's a mistake. It must be two weeks after Thomas. If it's the uh, 22nd of July. Or maybe it's the 22nd of June. There's a job for Google. Well, dates aside, we remember with Thanksgiving the witness of these two men, their passion for the gospel and their desire to serve God. Thursday morning prayer is found on page 407. Our psalm is portion of Psalm 18 and our reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In the name of the Holy and Blessed Trinity, revealed to us as the Creator, the Redeemer and the Sanctifier of the world. Amen. This is the message we have heard from Christ, that God is light, in whom there is no darkness at all. Glory to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, as in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. Our opening canticle, a song of God's herald. Go up to a high mountain, herald of good tidings to Zion. Lift up your voice with strength, herald of good tidings to Jerusalem. Lift up your voice, fear not. Say to the cities of Judah, Behold your God. See the Lord God coming with power, coming to rule with his mighty arm. He brings his reward for the people of God, the recompense for those who are saved. God will feed his flock like a shepherd and gather the lambs in his arms. He will hold them to his breast and gently lead those that are with young. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. 
Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Our psalm is Psalm 18, on page 236, saying verses 1 to 31. Psalm 18, on page 236. I love you, O Lord, my strength, O Lord, my crag, my fortress and my deliverer, my God, the rock to which I come for refuge, my shield, my mighty saviour and my high defence. I called to the Lord with loud lamentation and I was rescued from my enemies. The waves of death encompassed me and the floods of chaos overwhelmed me. The cords of the grave tightened about me, and the snares of death lay in my path. In my anguish I called to the Lord. I cried for help to my God. From his temple he heard my voice, and my cry came even to his ears. The earth heaved and quaked. The foundations of the hills were shaken. They trembled because he was angry. Smoke went out from his nostrils, and a consuming fire from his mouth. He parted the heavens and came down, and there was darkness under his feet. He rode upon the cherubim and flew. He came swooping upon the wings of the wind. He made the darkness his covering, and his canopy was thick cloud and watery darkness. Out of his clouds from the brightness before him broke hailstones and coals of fire. The Lord thundered in the heavens. The Most High uttered his voice. He let loose his arrows. He scattered them on every side. He hurled down lightnings with the roar of the thunderbolt. The springs of the sea were uncovered and the foundations of the world laid bare. At your rebuke, O Lord, at the blast of the breath of your displeasure. He reached down from on high and took me. He drew me out of the great waters. He delivered me from my strongest enemy, from my foes that were mightier than I. They confronted me in the day of my calamity, but the Lord was my upholder. He brought me out into a place of liberty and rescued me because I delighted his heart. The Lord rewarded me for his righteous dealing. He recompensed me according to the cleanness of my hands. Because I had kept to the ways of the Lord and had not turned from my God to do evil. For I had an eye to all his laws and did not put his commandments from me. I was also blameless before him, and I kept myself from my room, and I kept myself from wrongdoing. Therefore the Lord rewarded my innocence, because my hands were undefiled in his sight. With the faithful you show yourself faithful, with the blameless you show yourself blameless, with the pure you are pure, but with the crooked you show yourself perverse. For you will save a humble people, but you bring down the high looks of the proud. You light my lamp, O Lord my God. You make my darkness to be bright. For with your help I can charge an armed troop. With the help of my God I can leap a city wall. Almighty God, who wonderfully created us in your own image and yet more wonderfully restored us in your Son, Jesus Christ, grant that, as he came to share our human nature, so we may be partakers in his divine glory, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
A reading from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 15, beginning at the first verse. Then certain individuals came down from Judea and were teaching the brothers, unless you are circumcised according to the custom of Moses, you cannot be saved. And after Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and debate with them, Paul and Barnabas and some of the others were appointed to go up to Jerusalem to discuss this question with the apostles and the elders. So they were sent on their way by the church, and as they passed through both Phoenicia and Samaria, they reported the conversion of the Gentiles and brought great joy to all the believers. When they came to Jerusalem, they were welcomed by the church and the apostles and the elders, and they reported all that God had done with them. But some believers who belonged to the sect of the Pharisees stood up and said, It is necessary for them to be circumcised and ordered to keep the law of Moses. The apostles and the elders met together to consider this matter. After there had been much debate, Peter stood up and said to them, My brothers, you know that in the early days God made a choice among you, that I should be the one through whom the Gentiles would hear the message of the good news and become believers. And God, who knows the human heart, testified to them by giving them the Holy Spirit, just as he did to us, and in cleansing their hearts by faith, He has made no distinction between them and us. Now, therefore, why are you putting God to the test by placing on the neck of the disciples a yoke that neither our ancestors nor we have been able to bear? On the contrary, we believe that we will be saved through the grace of the Lord Jesus, just as they will. May your word live in us and bear much fruit to your glory. The Canticle, the Hymn of the Word. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world knew him not. He came to his own home, and his own people received him not. But to all who received him, who believed on his name, he has given power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of a man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. We have beheld his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, and from his fullness have we all received, and grace upon grace. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, who gave to your servants Thomas More and John Fisher boldness to confess the name of Jesus Christ and courage to die for this faith, Teach us always to be ready to give a reason for the hope that is in us and to suffer gladly for the sake of our Lord and Saviour who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. As we continue our prayers through this NADOC week, We pray this prayer, written by Brooke Prentice. God of holy dreaming, great creator God, Papa Jesus. Today we pray together on common ground. Common ground of an ancient land that you created common ground of over 65,000 years of peoples and place. Lord, 
We are longing for acknowledgement. We acknowledge that your creation was disturbed and disrupted in 1788. We acknowledge our failure to break the great Australian silence. We acknowledge the true history of the land, now called Australia. Lord, we are longing for truth. We grieve the truth of statistics that show we are not equal. Truth of death, sickness, imprisonment. Truth of lack of education and lack of employment. Truth of a gap that isn't closed. Lord, we are longing for justice. We seek justice for stolen land, stolen wages, stolen children. We seek justice for yesterday, today and tomorrow. Lord, we are longing for love. Today we stand together on common ground. We come together in the love of Christ and the love of our neighbour. We confess we have not loved one another as you have called us to and promised to do better. We long to embrace unity with diversity. We are longing for acknowledgement, truth, justice, love and hope. Lord, give us comfort for the pain in our day of mourning, courage for the fight in our day of invasion, strength for the journey in our day of survival. Lord, you are our hope. Amen. Lord and Heavenly Father, you have brought us safely to this new day. Keep us by your mighty power, protect us from sin, guard us from every kind of danger, and in all we do this day, direct us in the fulfilling of your purpose, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us praise the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of peace equip us with everything good, so that we may do his will, and may he work in us that which is pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever. Amen.